a demonstration of the Bendix TME2 high vacuum thermal evaporator. It is fitted with a crystal deposition rate monitor and a temperature monitor as well. This is a basic thermal deposition system, manual operation, not automated. <clears throat> there are two thermal sources, sources, both filament type sources. It has a diffusion pump with an Alcatel 2033 roughing pump. It has an 18 inch diameter glass bell jar with implosion shield and motorized hoist. It is powered by 208 volts single phase. <clears throat> okay, there's a number of things that we're going to go through. Um, I'm going to summarize them, but the first thing and the most important thing is the heart of the machine is the vacuum system. Right now, the system has been warmed up. Uh, uh, shortly, I'm going to shut the system off and turn it back on and show you how there'd be a few extra steps you have to take to bring it up to a working vacuum when you're starting from a cold start. But for now, let me show you uh, a basic operation. Uh, I've written a step-by-step -step instruction explaining uh, which valves open and you just got to follow the lights and the little diagrams I made and uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, it is an older system, however, despite the fact that it is pretty much manual or semi-manual, um, this can only be turned in the clockwise position, so you can't accidentally go backwards within the vacuum sequence. So why don't we start by venting the chamber. Uh, the chamber will vent approximately two minutes. <coughs> sometimes a little shorter, <coughs> depending on how much pressure you have on your purge line. So here we go. We're going to close the high vacuum valve to start with. And we're going to vent our chamber. Now the purpose of waiting through this amount of time is that what I'm showing you now would be the standard cycle time, if you will, of uh, using this piece of equipment once it's warmed up. You know, from the time you open the bell jar, you change your workpiece or your substrate, to the time you lower it, um, about how long would it take to get down to a, a fairly decent working vacuum. <clears throat> now, one of the things, this has been modernized as well, as I had mentioned, here is the uh, rate thickness and rate monitor a uh, temperature probe that is located inside the chamber. Uh, the controls for the different pumps, uh, two pumps that we will be getting to, uh, the controls for the filaments, and a device that I installed that uh, this is a chamber interlock. Uh, under no condition can you open the chamber until it's completely vented. Um, the, the vacuum is that powerful. It's more powerful than the actual hoist that would lift up the chamber. But what this also does is um, once it is unlocked and you can lift it, it disables the filaments <coughs> so they couldn't accidentally be turned on. Okay, we've got our green light. So first thing we're gonna do is lift our chamber. Now, this is a safety. You can't just use this switch. You must have both hands here. Uh, this is a safety feature. <clears throat> in order to operate the lift. So. Now normally you'd lift it up as far as you need to uh, go to do your exchanges of your workpiece. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go up all the way, show you that the top, there, that's the top stop. Now, if you step around the back, We've installed new bushings, new brass bushings in the top and the bottom. And if you pull this pin, I've installed a nylon centering ring. So 
if this was moved for servicing or exchanged or whatever, it's crucial that it be right back where you took it off so it has a good vacuum seal. So, pretty easy, push the pin in. And lower this down. <clears throat> now, also while we're back here, the piece of equipment is supplied with the Alcatel 2033 bump and uh, a section of vacuum lines with an adapter going into their the four line. <coughs> it does not come with this little uh, elbow here. This is my little gauge. I always like to measure the bump. So I keep my little gauge up on top just to uh, make sure we've got a good strong bump. Before we move on to the uh, front, uh, we've installed it's right behind here, but you can basically see it here. You can even read it. We've installed a contactor here. This is the actual contactor for the remote uh, vacuum pump. In many cases, these vacuum pumps are in a utility area. Uh, it is powered right here, so there's quite a bit of flex in here, so you can move your pump around. Uh, and there are Two fuses in here, which is marked here, fuses inside for this pump. So I wanted to make mention. Of that. Also, as a safety precaution, every single uh, cover on this piece of equipment, you might look right through here, you can see one right there, has a safety switch on it. So you can have the covers off, <coughs> but with any one of, I believe, the four or five switches, uh, you could not turn on the filament. So you could not do work. So we'll go back around the front now. Now what I'm going to do is uh, first just to show you some of the controls. I'm going to go. I tried this a couple times this morning. I think I've got it fairly correct. <clears throat> so we're. I'm going to exactly follow my instructions that are in here for running the piece of equipment when it's warm, so it's not a cold startup. <clears throat> so first thing you do is you load your workpiece in place, or there's clips up here to put a substrate in upside down. Then we lower. You can only lower or raise when the green light is on. has a stop as well, it will automatically stop. <clears throat> now, we will go to first first position clockwise, is pause. That's where you'd see all the valves. The vent valve, the roughing valve, the four-line valve, I call it the backing valve, and the high vacuum valve are all closed. So now you'd be ready to uh, start pumping down to do your work. Before we start that, over on this panel here, this is the gauge controllers. There are three gauges. <clears throat> one in the four line, one in the chamber, and the high vacuum gauge, which is just above the chamber. So this doesn't come on until we actually open the high vacuum valve. <clears throat> and they're respectively positioned here. You can see that uh, there's one there physically, one there physically. This is one that's not used. It's marked, not connected. And this is the one that we use. So they are represented respectively here. Uh, to turn this on, <clears throat> it's just one button here. Uh, this is a degassing button we don't normally use. Uh, this is an adjustment for the emission, so you can zero out. <clears throat> you can change the range manually, but it really works best if you just leave this in auto range on. It works perfectly. Now, normally these um, are the uh, higher vacuum gauges, so they uh, can operate from atmosphere down. But we do not turn on our ion gauge until we're substantially lower in vacuum. So we'll show you how that works. <coughs> okay. We 
start our cycle first by opening the roughing valve. Now right now, it's, it's a large volume in this chamber, so that'll start bumping down. Uh, again, this is my own little service thing, but this is right on top of the pump. So it's sort of nice, so you can sort of follow it down as well. It's actually connected right here. So it's just another source of reference. I always make sure the rotary bump, uh, roughing bump is uh, in good shape. <clears throat> Now, once the piece of equipment is warm, you'll notice in a few minutes, two to three minutes, maybe four, that this will uh, be down to the point where you can switch the back. Uh, back, back. We've noted in, uh, in the instructions here that a good place to switch would be between 50 and 100 millitor. Uh, that's both for the backing and the four line here. <clears throat> so right now we're waiting for our roughing of our chamber to come down. Then we will close that valve and open the four line, which backs the diffusion pump and pull that down somewhere between 50 and 100 millimeters. And here we go, once it goes, it goes pretty fast. So here we are on our way down. Oh, we're definitely down. Okay, so now we're gonna switch. Uh, remember, you can only go in a clockwise position. So we will switch now to the backing valve. Slight delay to allow this one to close and then this one to open. If you look at our four line gauge here, <clears throat> it is being pulled right down and we're already down low enough so you can open the high vacuum valve here. It opens up, the backing valve stays open, and we can now turn on our high vacuum chamber gauge. It would automatically seek, <clears throat> and we're just going to make sure we can get down into the minus six range. <clears throat> And we'll get down. I, I normally like to to keep time uh, until it gets to six uh, times ten to the minus six. So we're almost there. This particular vacuum level is more than sufficient <clears throat> for doing work in the chamber. Uh, shortly I'll give a demonstration where I'm going to just evaporate some small pieces of aluminum uh, and we'll see the rate monitor so we can see what the thickness of the coating would be had we had something up there. <clears throat> but I always like to try to at least get down on this point.
and we are there. Uh, five minutes, uh, about five minutes, 15, five minutes, 20 seconds. So once it's warmed up, it's, it's pretty quick to get working. Uh, now, uh, normally if we were going to vent and we were finished using the filaments, which I said we will get back to in a moment, but I want to keep that separate. Uh, the venting process, which is part of the uh, vacuum system operation, is very similar. The first thing that we suggest is turning off the chamber high vacuum gauge before you do anything else. Now, if you look through the mesh guard on here, you will see the chamber high vacuum gauge. <coughs> The less that runs at higher levels or closer to atmosphere, the cleaner it will stay. So right now, that is a typical glow from its filament. And keep watching it. And what we suggest is after you're done with your run, toggle the switch back again on here on filament and turn it off. It just preserves it a little bit more rather than letting it suck in too much uh, atmosphere when you vent. Now when we go back to here, <clears throat> we will move to pause. Pause closes the high vacuum valve, but since now we're backing a nice warm hot diffusion pump, the uh, backing valve uh, or pour light valve stays open. Then at this point, we can vent. The system will vent. <clears throat> This, of course, is back. This is closed. And now we uh, typically, with nitrogen, will purge vent the chamber. Now, while we're waiting for it to vent, let me mention that there are two sets of controls. This is turned all the way down. This is turned all the way down. One is the filament light. The other, which will respectively be left and right. The other is the filament two, which is not installed. When I lift the chamber, I will show you where, if you want to install it, you can. Uh, it's a completely separate uh, unit. This would be filament two, and it's uh, variable power transformer control down here. This is for filament one. And again, filament one actually has a left and a right, so it actually has two filaments. Now we're just waiting for our green light, and then it'll be safe to lift the chambers. Also, if the filament had been accidentally left off, as you can see, when the green light went on, it also turned off the filament control circuit. Now, we're going to lift up our chain. Now, if you step over here, you'll see there is a post right here. Between that post and ground on this side would be your filament tube. Inside the casing here, <laughs> You'll see it's a much smaller um, <clears throat> uh, transformer. It's a, a much smaller auxiliary circuit, if you will. However, this is our main. This is our, respectively, our left and our right, and our ground for both. Now, this is something you may want to make yourself or whatever. This is the shutter that came with it. We're not really sure how it works. It sort of covers both of them, but uh, you might want to flip it over. It's just a piece of aluminum that you can cut, and I'm not sure whether you may be using a bolt for your evaporation. Uh, so you might want to just look into chaining. It just comes off with one screw and you can chain it. <clears throat> okay, um, now uh, we're going to lower this again, but notice in here, There are some tangled up pieces of aluminum. These are typically, we buy these, 
These are typically little pieces of aluminum that are used for evaporation. So I put a little pile in there, and what we're going to test is the thickness um, as per time. So uh, measured in angstroms per second. So now we lower our chamber. Our green light is on, of course. Close the vent valve. Open the roughing valve. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Our chamber is starting to come down. Again, the high vacuum gauge measures from uh, 10 to the minus fourth down. These gauges here will measure right barely to the edge of minus three. So they go through the entire minus two range and then your measurement would switch to here. They safely can sit below zero, that doesn't hurt. Now again, it's between 50 and 100 millitor. Um, it's a, it's a, it's healthy for the machine at this point to, to go to the vacuum valve. This closes. Vacuum valve opens. And our vacuum valve is pulled all the way down. So we can open our high vacuum valve, followed by turning on our high vacuum gauge. I'm going to wait the full five minutes. Uh, we've got one more minute. And then we'll light up the filaments.
Now, once the aluminum starts to evaporate, you will notice a uh, change in the vacuum. Uh, there is a very specific range, uh, which is liberal. There's wide range you can use um, to use for evaporation. Here we go. We're good. All right. We're going to turn on our filament, filament one. And first, we're going to go to the left side. I don't have anything in that filament, just the tip. <clears throat> A quick glance down here, though, and you'll see that we slowly start to bring up our filament. It'll heat, it'll bounce back down. And for this particular filament, I get up to about halfway. Now, now we go back to our filament up here. And you'll see that it's glowing. I'm going to go up to about Halfway. Now. And now I'll turn it off. Give it a moment. Now again, as I had pointed out, there's a clump of uh, aluminum on that filament. And what we should be able to do, not in total, complete uh, coverage, but as you can see on that angle piece there that looks sort of like a street light, that's our actual thickness and rate monitor. And again, we should, in a short period of time, within you know a few seconds or so after it gets lit up, be able to see this rise. So it will be in real time counting the thickness in angstroms per second. All right, here we go. This is our right filament. As you can see, that's showing us that it is actually growing, if you will, at the rate of so many angstroms per second. So we're getting a good coat. And I'll turn it down. So after you're done with your um, application or your process, Switch back to pause. Oh, pardon me. Turn off. It's in the book. I should have read my own book. Turn off the high vacuum gauge and switch to the first pause position. Valves close respectively. This stays open. And then we're going to bend. Now, from a cold start, after you go through the very first cold start, you'll notice that each time you go all the way around, the backing valve will stay open. It knows you're up and running now. However, <clears throat> when you shut the machine down, there's nothing to worry about with this valve staying open because it will automatically close all the valves once it loses power. Now we're just waiting for our green light. And the last thing we'll be showing you is uh, how to start this up from a cold start. Uh, we're just going to turn the machine off and turn it back on. So everything's sort of warmed up first, so it won't, won't take a very long time. But it's important that you see these couple of extra steps. They're very simple. OK, 
Okay, there's our green light. So we know that we... Uh, okay, put this up. Yes. All right, we're going to put it back down. And before we go any farther, it's important, this has an emergency stop on it. Uh, this, of course, is plugged into the machine and has an auxiliary plug so you can plug stuff in. So everything should go off if you turn it off. Very important. So now, let's just take a walk around the back one more time. To our main breaker. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to slowly set that button. Just give it a little turn clockwise and it clicks back up. And this would be how you would be starting your system uh, with everything turned off. Here we go. And we'll go back around the front. Now, the only thing that would be different with running this system, okay, if you were starting from a cold start, just like we were, is uh, first use the far left switch to turn on your gauge control, remembering not to turn on the filament. That's only for once you have a high vacuum valve open and you're completely pumping on the chain. Again, if you follow the instructions, it's almost the same thing. Turn to pause. But this time, you turn on the roughing pump and you turn on the diffusion pump. So at this point here, before you started roughing anything, obviously you couldn't because you have the pump on. Turn on the roughing pump, you'll hear the pump go on. And it lights and you turn on the diffusion pump. It lights. You can always, if you listen, you can hear the relays clicking too, and the diffusion pump warms up. Now, normally, this would take about wood if you were to go through a running cycle, if you will, when it's warm. Uh, but the pump was on, so it should be warmed up in just a second. That is basically it. Other than turning these two things on, once you start going around again, uh, it'll know where you are, and uh, you can just operate without having to turn anything else other than this dial here and turning the <clears throat> chamber high vacuum valve on and off. So we'll just do it one final time, see if we lost too much vacuum here. We're going to uh, pump from uh, chamber uh, atmosphere down.
Okay, we didn't lose too much temperature on the, the fusion bump. It stays hot for quite a while. <clears throat> Our chamber gauge is coming down. And we're down low enough to switch to the backing valve. It's already down all the way. It's a nice tight system, it really is. And we open our high vacuum valve. We can now turn on our vacuum gauge. Remember, you can always look through the safety grate here. You can always see it in there. It should have a nice orange glow to it. And we've already flipped to the sixth range. We'll just hit eight and we'll call it a day there. We'll quickly check our filaments one more time. Uh, our left filament. Left filament and and our right filament. Yep, we still got aluminum left in there. And all right. There. We will turn off our filaments. We will turn off our high vacuum gauge. Pause. And bend. Now, shutdown is very simple. Um, of course, we turned off this cage here. We no longer need our gauge panel. Turn off our diffusion pump and turn off our weapon. <clears throat> now, um, it's safe now to go around to the back. Power. You can turn off your nitrogen bird if you have one here. And you notice that I didn't turn off the chiller yet. Um, this is a practice that I've done for years with the fusion pump systems. Is that sometimes with these diffusion pumps, and it's it's a hefty diffusion pump on there. Um, it's a it has a 10 inch port on it. If you turn them off and you turn the water off them too fast sometimes if there isn't enough oil in it the oil can boil completely and it'll then crack and turn into tar uh, it, it doesn't happen very often but I have seen it happen in some pumps so one of the best things that I like to do is leave the chiller running for to be on the safe side for 15 minutes uh, to the point where you know it has had the chance to cool that thing down naturally so the internal heat from the oil, which believe me, gets hot, uh, doesn't run away and wind up turning into tar. So it's a good practice. So we'll go back around the front. <coughs> Yes, it is a manual system, but it's been upgraded in a way that uh, makes it very simple to use. 
as you can see, it's ready to go to work. Uh, the one important thing is at the completion of this demo, this will go to our paint shop where the entire frame for this system will be completely repainted and brought back to its original industrial finish. And that completes this demonstration.